and welcome to the public meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission. We are meeting today to consider the draft no proposed rulemaking to establish safety standards for infant support cushions. Before I begin, I want to make sure that any commissioners who are not in person can he hear us and we can hear them. Commissioner Trumka, can you hear us? I can indeed. Yeah, we can hear you. We're going to start with questions for staff. We have several staff members present to answer questions if there are any. Uh, joining us today, we have Dr. Stephanie Marquez, uh, Project Manager and Supervi uh, Supervisory Scientist with the Office of Hazard Identification and Reduction, and Ms. Elizabeth Layton, Attorney, Office of General Counsel. Uh, each commissioner will have five minutes for questions, can have multiple rounds if necessary. After the questions are complete, we're going to consider any amendments if there are any. As a reminder, if you have any questions that address statutory interpretation or legal advice, please don't ask them at this time. We're going to now move to questions. I myself don't have any questions. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, Dr. Marquez and, and Ms. Layton, I want to uh, thank you both for uh, for being here and for your work on the NPR. And uh, uh, thank you in particular for the, the uh, public uh, briefing that you put on earlier this month. That was very helpful. Um, I did have a question uh, that I've had an opportunity previously to, to, to discuss with, uh, with, with Mr. Levine, CPSC Executive Director. Uh, so th this question is, is for you and your team. Uh, but I, I did want to ask about stockpiling. Uh, on a number of recent occasions, the commissions directed the inclusion of anti-stockpiling provisions, including, for example, the SNPR uh, on portable generators that we uh, considered back in April. And in certain contexts, I think this makes sense, particularly where we're concerned about excess non-compliant inventory. Uh, here, however, staff's proposal doesn't include this language. In, in the context of uh, infant support cushions or even durable infant products more broadly, uh, I'm, 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 I'm curious whether staff has evidence that stockpiling is occurring. I'm concerned that the inclusion of an anti-stockpiling provision in a final rule uh, may be a solution in search of a problem or, or worse, may inject unnecessary litigation risk into a final rule. Uh, but, but I want to hear staff's view about what the marketplace looks like. Do you have evidence that manufacturers are likely to stockpile non-compliant products before the rule's effective date? Thank you for the question. And, um, you know, this is uh, on behalf of staff having spoken with technical staff and and, and otherwise uh, currently we're not seeing um, evidence of, of stockpiling in, the, in this context um, particularly when we're looking at uh, rules that have involved uh, industry significant industry input um, in uh, what we call the 104 context and the, the durable nursery historically we have not seen that uh, so it's not to say that it isn't something um, that is worthy of, of consideration, but it's not something where we have seen active evidence of significant stockpiling. Okay, I appreciate that response. That that uh, that helps clarify a, a few things. Thank you for that. Again, Dr. Marquez, Ms. Layton, thank you so much for your work. I have no further questions and would yield the balance of my time. Thank you, Commissioner Trumka. Do you have questions? You know, once again, thank you so much for your tremendous work on this issue. Um, I have no questions. Commissioner Boyle. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have any questions, but would like to thank you for all your work. Thank you. Uh, hearing no further questions, staff is excused and we'll move to consideration of the package. Uh, before putting the matter, it's proposed by staff to a vote. I'm going to entertain any amendments to the motion uh, that the commissions may propose. Uh, I myself don't have any amendments. Commissioner Feldman, do you have any amendments? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Trumka, do you have an amendment? I do have one amendment uh, that I circulated last week. Uh, I want to recognize you to introduce your amendment for up to three minutes. Okay. Uh, so the amendment asks for a, a request. It would insert a request for comment on whether we should uh, include an anti stockpiling provision. Uh, and would seek comment on that, and it gives the example of the, the one you mentioned, Commissioner Feldman, the SNPR on portable generators, the uh, anti-stockpiling provision we added there. Is there a second? Second. Hearing a second, we now turn to comments and questions from other commissioners. Going to begin with myself. Um, you know, at this point in time, I don't have comments. Uh, generally, if it's a neutral question, I have been supportive of uh, language being added not weighing in on the final merits. Commissioner Feldman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I do want to thank my colleague, Commissioner Trumka, for offering this amendment uh, for comment on the anti-stockpiling provision. 
uh, whether or not that including that in the rule would be appropriate. Uh, earlier, I, I just asked staff for their views on whether such a provision would be necessary, and, and based on the evidence, uh, it, it appears that their view of, of uh, what the marketplace looks like, that, that such a provision uh, wouldn't be necessary, uh, and I'm not convinced that it would be. Anti-stockpiling provisions may make sense where we have evidence to support uh, concerns about excess noncompliant inventory, but, but uh, as, as we heard, we're just not seeing that here. Uh, nevertheless, consistent with longstanding commission practice, commissioners should enjoy the right to ask questions for comment. Uh, whether when, when the agency agency publishes NPRs, it's been my view, so long as the questions are asked in a neutral manner, uh, that that commissioners be able to do so. And while I do have concerns about including such a provision in a final rule, I, I will vote in favor of this amendment. Thank you, Commissioner Bull. Questions or comments? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I'm satisfied with the staff package as written, so I don't plan to support the amendment. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Trumka, do you have anything to add? No, thank you for consideration. Okay, now I'm going to move to a vote on the amendment. Um, Commissioner Feldman. I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka. Yes. Commissioner Boyle. No. Um, and I vote yes, as I said, as generally questions are neutrally asked. I'm not opposed without weighing in on the underlying merits of it. Um, so the yeses are three, the noes are one. The amendment is adopted. Commissioner Trumka, do you have any other amendments? I do not. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle, do you have any amendments? I don't. Thank you. Hearing no additional amendments, I move to approve the draft and then as proposed rulemaking on infant support uh, cushions. As amended, is there a second? Second. Hearing a second, now I'm going to move to a vote. Commissioner Feldman, how do you vote? I vote yes. Commissioner Trumka? Yes. Commissioner Boyle? Yes. And I vote yes as well. With that, the yeses are four, the noes are zero. The draft noes proposed rulemaking on infant support cushions as amended is approved. And now we can move to closing statements with each commissioner having up to 10 minutes. Um, First, I'm going to start where my fellow commissioners have uh, also started, which is thanking the staff for their hard work in putting together this important proposal. The rule covers an important set of products that to date have fallen outside of the reach of our mandatory and voluntary performance standards. Um, this is, uh, includes infant loungers, positioners, and other pillow-like products that don't meet the definition of a banned infant pillow. As staff described in the briefing package, this is a vital uh, need for safety standards here from 2010 to 2022. We know of at least 79 deaths and an additional 125 incidents with these products involving uh, infants. I urge stakeholders to comment. I would look forward to a robust comment period and to considering a final package and appreciate the engagement of my fellow commissioners. Commissioner Feldman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for convening this decisional meeting uh, today. I want to, again, expand, extend special thanks to our dedicated staff for their work, uh, not only on today's package uh, and presentation, but also their work on durable infant nursery products in general. Uh, I'm pleased that the commission will now put this proposal out for public comment and consideration. Uh, this rulemaking process would not work without valuable input we receive from stakeholders and advocates in the form of comments, uh, which I look forward to reviewing when we get them. Uh, again, thank you to all involved. Mr. Chairman, I, I yield the balance of my time. Commissioner Trumka. Uh, again, thank you to the staff of this agency. You have put forward tremendous ideas uh, on how to solve this problem. Thank you. Commissioner Boyle. Again, thank you to the staff for their work on this issue for a longstanding amount of time. Uh, I'm pleased that the package has finally come to the commission and that it will be moving forward. I note in particular that this package demonstrates heightened risk for the youngest infants. In this instance, the data revealed that more than 80% of the fatalities associated with the products involved infants three months and younger, and the NPR on rockers that we recently approved showed a similarly concerning pattern in this youngest cohort. As staff said in this package, while all infants younger than 12 months of age are considered at risk of positional asphyxia, infants two to six months of age, premature infants, and infants who are born as a set of multiples are particularly vulnerable and are at the highest risk primarily due to physical inability and an immature physiological system that regulates breathing and arousal in the first few months of life. 
In that context, I note that in 2022, CDC reports that approximately one in 10 infants born in the US is preterm. So as we continue our work on infant products in general, including those for which we already have rules in place, I urge staff and other stakeholders to focus on this age group so that we can reduce the heightened risk for this most vulnerable population. Thank you again, and I look forward to seeing the comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, thanks again to staff and for all your work on this package. Um, this concludes today's decisional meeting of the Consumer Product Safety Commission.